Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well. Now for this video, I wanted to take a look at one of my favorite moments of the Jurassic Park franchise. The San Diego incident from the climax of The Lost World, where the Tyrannosaur Buck escapes from the SS Venture after killing its entire crew and then causing a Godzilla rampage on San Diego. This incident has had a huge impact on the entire franchise, for not only did it validate Dr. Ian Malcolm's claims about what he saw in Jurassic Park, but it also made the general public aware of what InGen was really up to and that dinosaurs were indeed created by John Hammond and a scientist and were existing in the world today. Today I wanted to take a look at this 1997 incident in more detail for not only is it an epic scene but there's also plenty of little easter eggs from other dinosaur movies and classic monster movies in it and also because the presence of this event is still felt within the Jurassic Park franchise even to this day. Within the Lost World Jurassic Park movie, there are two events that I believe are most responsible for the San Diego incident and the Tyrannosaurus Rampage coming to be. And these events both happen when we are still on the island. The first of which is when the gatherers, Nick Van Owen and Sarah Harding, sabotage the Engine Hunters camp. This is when they release all the dinosaurs that were intended to be used for Jurassic Park San Diego. You know, they set them free of their cages and restraints and then causes the dinosaurs to pretty much trash and destroy the engine hunters camp and destroy their communication equipment in the process. Then the second incident I would say is the gatherers, again Nick Van Owen and Sarah Hardings, this is their decision to treat the a baby tyrannosaur's injured leg. Both of these events have disastrous results. They have this cause and effect relationship that doesn't end up well. So we think about it. So before the engine hunters camp got sabotaged, the dinosaurs that Peter Ludlow wanted to use in his Jurassic Park San Diego were all herbivores. They were all herbivore dinosaurs. The dinosaurs that he wanted to include within Jurassic Park San Diego included Parasaurolophus, the Gallimimus, Pachycephalosaurus, Triceratops, Stegosaurus, as well as Compsognathus. However, after the camp gets sabotaged, all of that goes out the window. They lose everything that they come after for on their trip to Isla Sorna. Now with Nick Van Owen and Sarah Harding treating the baby Tyrannosaurus broken leg, this also has pretty disastrous results because not only does it lead to the adult Tyrannosaurus coming for their infant and destroying you know, the gatherer's uh, mobile trailer lab as well as the death of Eddie Carr, but because they decided to treat the baby Tyrannosaurus leg, the baby's blood is soaked onto Sarah Harding's jacket. So then, so then once the hunters and the gatherers once they are forced to work together after their communication equipment is destroyed and they have to work together to find a way to radio for help, because the baby's blood is soaked onto Sarah Harding's jacket, that causes the Tyrannosaurus to again find this large group of people and this ultimately leads to the tranquil tranquilization and the capture of the bull Tyrannosaur. Now I'm not gonna lie, it's a real badass scene once Roland has tranquilized the bull Tyrannosaur. Just the way that it's shot, and then when John Williams' score comes up in the moment, you know that boom, 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 boom. You guys know the score I'm talking about. Just the way the scene is shot is just real cool. You get the nice wide shot of Roland stalking the bull Tyrannosaur. You see the T Rex searching for anything it can eat in the distance. Roland hits it with one dart. The T Rex roars. We get the POV shot of the Rex looking down at Roland. Just where Roland has to load up another dart. Just that scene, it's, it's short, but it's very, very sweet. So now that the bull Tyrannosaur is tranquilized, this is where Peter Ludlow decides that instead of having all the herbivore dinosaurs that he originally came for, he decides to take the opportunity it has right in front of him. He then uses the tranquilized Tyrannosaur, basically, you know, puts it in cage and restraints and plans to have this T-Rex and its infant used in Jurassic Park San Diego, thinking that it could bring him a lot of money. Which ultimately backfired. The bull Tyrannosaur would then be transported to San Diego via the SS Venture, while its infant would be transported by plane. Once the movie makes its shift to San Diego, the crew at the Engine Waterfront Complex are having trouble reaching the crew of the SS Venture. With no response from the crew and the ship approaching the docking area at a rapid pace, we can only assume that something terrible has happened to the crew during the voyage. Once the SS Venture crashes into the dock of the Ingen Waterfront Complex, Peter Ludlow and several other Ingen personnel board the ship and survey the damage that has happened. Once on the ship, 
we see several severed limbs as well as the broken cage that was housing the Tyrannosaur earlier with its bars all bent in. This cage was absolutely demolished. We then cut to a severed hand which is seen holding the controls that open and close the cargo hold doors. Peter Ludlow then demands that the cargo hold doors be opened to see if there's any crew remaining. Ian Malcolm tries to stop an engine worker from opening the cargo hold doors knowing the danger that's ahead of him. It's at this moment that the enraged Tyrannosaur bursts out of the cargo hold doors angry at its captors and in just an enraged and just locomotive state. It is at this moment right here, right as the T-Rex bursts out of the cargo hold doors, it's at this moment that the public becomes aware that Engine had actually brought dinosaurs back to life. We then learned from Sarah Harding and an Engine worker that during the voyage, the Tyrannosaur had actually had stopped breathing. This is due to the animal's reaction to the tranquilizer that it was given earlier. Roland had hit the animal with two darts of concentrated carfentanil at 10 milligrams. This should put the animal into a coma. However, the Tyrannosaur stopped breathing. This, le this led the crew of the SS Venture to give the animal an antagonist, something to fight off the effects of the tranquilizer. However, they didn't know how much of an antagonist to give the T-Rex, which basically led to them just freeballing how much of a dosage to give the creature, which basically made the Tyrannosaur high on drugs, we'll say, and this puts the T-Rex into a narcoleptic and just enraged locomotive state. Following the breakout from the SS Venture, we then get a few more scenes of the T-Rex in San Diego. We get to see him look into the window of a young boy named Benjamin. This shot has always been something that Steven Spielberg himself always envisioned to see in a Jurassic Park movie. And then we get to see the classic iconic downtown San Diego rampage where you see the T-Rex causing cars to crash into each other and flip over, then it crashes into a bus, chases a crowd of people, until finally being lured back to the cargo hold by Ian Malcolm and Sarah Harding by using the Buck Tyrannosaurus infant. During the downtown rampage scene, there actually are several easter eggs to, of course, classic dinosaur movies as well as old and iconic um, kaiju films as well. Of course the most obvious one is when the T-Rex is chasing the crowd of people we cut to a bunch of Japanese men running screaming I left Japan to get away from this. It's an obvious reference to the Godzilla franchise. And then of course the entire San Diego sequence itself is a big reference to the original Lost World movie based on the novel by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. In the 1925 Lost World they bring a brontosaurus back to London where it causes chaos in the city. One more reference that I didn't actually catch until another YouTuber, um, a Jurassic Park YouTuber pointed out in one of their videos, Clayton Fiority, that the luring of the bull tyrannosaur by using this infant is a big reference to the 1961 British film Gorgo. Basically the ending of Gorgo where the mother creature is looking for her infant in the city is heavily played in the San Diego incident right here which is actually something that I didn't even catch for a long long time until Clayton Fiordi in one of his videos it pointed it out to me. The San Diego incident had definitely made a huge impact on the rest of the Jurassic Park franchise. The incident had made the general public aware that Injun had indeed brought back dinosaurs from extinction. This resulted in Isla Sorna being restricted from the general public. The presence of the San Diego incident was still felt even after 1997. We see that in Jurassic Park 3 that during Alan Grant's seminar, several people have questions but the questions are mostly relating to his experiences on Jurassic Park on Isla Nublar or regarding the San Diego incident of 1997. And still, even to this day, the Tyrannosaurus Rampage back in 1997 is still being talked about. If you look on all the marketing material for Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, you guys, on the Dinosaur Protection Group's website, you can find several articles regarding what happened after 1997 as a result of the Tyrannosaurus Rampage. It's pretty interesting to read. I'll leave a link in the description. And that's about all I have to say about this memorable Jurassic Park moment, you guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, and hope you guys are looking forward uh, for hearing more. You know, let me you guys know in the comments below what you guys want to see me talk about here on this channel. You know, because I do miss making videos for all of you. Alright you guys, I'll see you all in the next video, and hey, as always, take it easy.